Hey guys, my name is Deepak Mehta and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the new WebEx app. Cisco has finally combined their two collaboration platforms, WebEx Teams and WebEx Meetings to give users one unified experience for messaging, calling and meetings. Apart from all standard functions of collaboration platforms, two things that really stand out for new WebEx app are native AI powered virtual assistant plus WebEx smart audio options which removes the background noise including any background speech. Both are available inside WebEx meetings today. And trust me, there are a lot of good things in store with this new WebEx app. So let's jump right into the demo. First thing is to download the WebEx app. Simply go to webex.com downloads. Here you can download the latest version that you need for Mac or Windows. Once you launch the app, it would take you to the initial login screen. Make sure you're signed up for the Webex account before you sign in. You can sign up for a free Webex account using start for free button on the same website on the top. You can use your email to sign in, which, use, which you use to create your Webex account. After logging in to the app, starting from top left, you would see your profile picture where you can set your availability and status and also upload a profile photo. In the middle section on the top, you would see a plus sign and a search bar. Plus sign allows you to easily send a message or create a space or make a call or add a contact or easily schedule a meeting. You can see how things are coming together. With just one click, you can now take five different actions. Next on, search bar in the middle gives you ability to search for people and spaces or contacts, and you can call or chat with them directly from here. I can see here WebEx app is certainly making it super easy to collaborate. One right hand top corner on right hand top corner, you would see connect to a device option. This is a cool feature which allows you to automatically connect your WebEx app to a WebEx conference room device. So with this, you can now make use of a conference device to start or join meetings without having to manually dial into the meeting. Now coming to the left pane, we can see chat, teams, contacts, calling, and calendar. Also at the bottom, you would see apps icon, which takes you to the new WebEx app hub, and you can integrate third-party apps with your, your Teams environment from here. New WebEx app is built around Teams. So if you go into Teams tab, here you can create a new team. Just click the plus sign and give a name and a description and start adding your people and start collaborating. Once you create a team, you will see a journal space, which is created by default for that team. So what is space? Space is a dedicated channel where you can discuss specific word stream, which your team is probably involved with. Also, you can create multiple spaces for different project inside a team. Just click on the plus sign under your team to add more spaces. Inside a space, you would get message, people, content, schedule and apps tab and on the top right there's a big green meet button which you can use to start an instant meeting with all the space members just like that you can start collaborating with your team with that quick meet now button message section is the main window for messaging the space members and you can also upload a file from your computer or tie this to your OneDrive account. Using the screen capture icon, you can take a quick screenshot and share it with the other space members. You can also use GIF, emojis, threads, which are standard for today's messaging apps. You can right click and pin a message and use pin message icon to refer to it later. So kind of a handy way of making important note of things you want to remember. People tab allows you to see members who are in that team or space, and you can make a user a moderator 
or remove them from the space altogether. Content tab gives you access to the files, whiteboard, links that were shared inside the space so that you can always refer to them later. You can also start a new whiteboard from here and co-collaborate on it at the same time with other space members. Schedule tab would let you quickly create and send a meeting invite. And the plus app tabs, you can add a website or additional apps like Mural, Miro, and you can also bring in third-party apps straight from the app hub inside your teams and enhance your productivity. Now moving on to the chat section, if you select chat icon, then you get access to all your chat messages at one place. If you click on direct, then you would see the direct chats only and spaces will give you access to all your space chats. So you can quickly switch between direct chat and space chat. You can favorite a space or contact by right clicking on their name and it would now appear on top favorite section. If you click on double arrows filter icon, then you can see your notification, unread messages, threads, and you can also select favorites to show on top or you can select a compact view if you want to see more contacts inside your teams. In direct chat, you can hover your mouse over a contact card and you will see chat, audio call, video call, and last one is people insights, which gives more information about the user, example, his title, designation, and public profile info, which is publicly available. Again, very handy before you start a conversation because you get an idea about the background of the other person in advance. Moving on to calling, if you click on calling section, you would see list of all missed and all calls that you got. This includes calls that you placed to join WebEx meetings as well. If you want to call someone in your team who is using WebEx Teams, just simply type his name in the search bar and choose a phone for audio and a camera for a video call. One of the things that separates Teams calling from others is its seamless integration with on-premise PBX without any additional component requirement. You can easily integrate the app with your on-premise Cisco PBX and SBCs and get full function of PSTN calling where you can call your mobile or any international numbers. Moving on to calendar tab, on top left you can see personal meeting room details, which is kind of a dedicated space for you where you can have meetings anytime, just share the link with all the users. In the middle, you will get start a meeting, join a meeting or schedule a meeting. Right below that is the main calendar area where you would see your whole schedule. This schedule is populated based on the type of integration you have built for your team's tenant, whether it's on on-prem exchange or Office 365 or Google Calendar. All these calendar types are supported. Also, you choose, you can choose the calendar view type starting from top list view, which we're seeing right now, to today view, next is work week, and then full week view. And if you want to schedule a meeting, then just click on the schedule a meeting icon. And note here, you can either choose one time meeting link or you can choose your personal room depending upon your needs. Once you have chosen time and invited people, then hit schedule at the bottom. Once scheduled, you would see the meeting populate in your calendar. You would get a notification for the meeting. And also, when the time is up, you get a big green join button. Or you can simply start your personal meeting room by clicking start a meeting. You also get meeting notifications on top of your messaging window. And you can see in advance who have joined the meeting. This is really a cool feature which gives you an idea if relevant people have joined in or not in advance. Before joining the meeting, you would get a pre-meeting join window. Starting on the left, if you click on connect to room device, 
it would try to search for a nearby video conferencing device and automatically connect to a room device. In the middle, you can choose the audio connection type, whether you want to use your computer audio, call in or connect without audio. You can click on test speaker and microphone to test the devices for computer audio. Starting on top, you can select speaker you want to choose and you can test it. Similar way, you can choose your microphone device and you can test it as well. Inside Webex Smart Audio, the first option is, which is selected by default, is to remove all background noise, which is good. But if someone is talking at the back, it might still catch it. So in that case, better use Optimize My Voice, which removes not only the background noise, but any background speech. So for example, if people are talking in the background, it will also remove that. So who wouldn't want to use this, especially if you're working in a crowded space. So on the bottom left, you get option to unmute yourself before you enter the meeting. And if you click on this audio options drop down, you can select or choose the speaker that you want to use inside your meeting. You can select your microphone and then you also get to select the Webex smart audio options like noise removal, optimize for my voice or music mode. Then next on is start video. If I click on start video, it will start my video in the meeting. And once I start my video, I will get the options to change my background from the top. So if I click on change my background, I get to choose blur background or I can choose a few other options from these uh, lovely backgrounds or I can upload a custom background for myself. So we do have a lot of background options and then once I'm ready, I'll just click on start my meeting. Inside your Webex meetings, you will see Webex assistant on the left, which is a voice enabled AI power assistant, captures meeting notes, highlights using just the voice command. I would put a link in the description on what type of voice commands are supported. Then you can turn on closed caption, which shows live text as people speak or which converts to live text as people are speaking in the meeting. In the middle section, you have unmute. If you click on the down arrow, you get to choose your audio options, which we also saw in the pre-meeting window as well. So it gives an easy way of changing it once you're inside your meeting. Then comes start video. And if you click on the down arrow, you would be able to change your video devices. Next is share where you can choose a screen or a specific app, or you can also share a file or whiteboard inside meetings. The whiteboard inside meeting is not the same we saw earlier in the content section. This is something which Cisco is probably trying to unify in terms of the experience. You can also record your meeting and you can use live reactions and hand gestures, which makes meetings more interactive and fun. If you click three dots, you get presented with more options like switch your audio connection type, connect to a video device, lock your meeting, invite more people and copy meeting link. And finally, the breakout rooms. Right beside this is the big red button, which would end the meeting. And then you have participants icon, which shows you the list of participants and you can see their status and also check their people insights profile to gain more info on their background. You can mute all and unmute all from the two options on this screen. Next is chat, which allows you to either send messages to everyone or you can select a specific user and send a direct message as well. On the top left, you get the full meeting info, which can be shared via email, as well as besides that, you get additional meeting menu options. I hope you found it useful. If you have any comments, suggestions, or any topics that you want me to cover, or anything that will improve my delivery, please do let me know in the comment section. Um, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.